So after about 25 days, Bethune-Cookman University has decided not to sign Ed Reed on as their head coach and pretty much force him out of the program. I don't think they liked um, his rant that he did on Instagram, which I did a video on about, about a lot of the stuff that's going on on campus and how bad it is. And so maybe he didn't have to handle it in that way. But Ed Reed is a a valuable opportunity here. And y'all y'all let him y'all push him out for this? Like I I don't agree. But this is some of what Ed Reed had to say about the situation. Y'all want all these recruits. But there are some corrupt people in this world, some evil people that don't care about kids like I do. So I want y'all to hear the truth from me. I ain't withdrawing my name. I got the receipts. They got all kinds of stuff going on around here. Hoarding these buildings with nothing but trash in them. You understand me? And in case you missed my last video or his rant on this, like it was it was buildings full of trash. Right on the campus. Just I mean, trash everywhere you look. And he has been there cleaning it up, like with the football team, hands on in the 25 days as he's been there. For free. You know what I'm saying? And Dion was right. And I know I'm right. And they got some people in here who be snitching to them. And I work with once Judas as Jesus walked with him. And I ain't have a problem with it. Because even Jesus prevailed. Sir. And what God got for you, no man can take you. Sir. I told these young men, I don't care who we play, because I don't. My nephew would transfer here. My nephew right there. They want me to leave my nephew here. Am I lying now? And so you got to understand some of why his emotions running like this, because, you know, he didn't he didn't start recruiting. He just started the process, get, got his nephew there, this, that, another. And then they force him out like that's You know, I know people say he probably shouldn't be going off and handling it in this way. And that's probably why he's uh, not being allowed to coach there since the first Instagram rant. But, you know, when, when people is on some bull. And you try to go in there, correct it, you know, it, it kind of it, it, it'll, it'll spill out like that. It'll spill out like that. He been getting a bad break at Southern. Some evil people, man, that don't care about your kids. But I was here because I wanted them all, like I told y'all last night, and I still do. And if somebody gave me a job, they all could come. Probably won't happen. But I'll tell y'all this. My brother died 11 years ago around this time, and we buried him. And I was in the NFL in the cold to advice when I found out. And I didn't go home. I played the game on Sunday because that's what he want me to do. Just like I want y'all to keep going, regardless of what happens today. Young men, that's what I've been telling you. And them were some strong words right there because it's like no matter what's going on in your life, travesties could happen tragedy this that and other like so 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 much stuff could go on in your life that could rattle your world but the world is going to keep moving and you got to keep moving too even if it hurts in the process of doing so but this is something where uh, Dion had to say when he called him you, you know I know you like a book and I know how you feel about them kids and I know you do not want to leave those kids So I'm praying for you right now, man, because this is going to be the toughest thing you ever had to do in your life. Sometimes, Ed, you got to walk away, my brother. I know it's tough. I know you don't want to hear it. But sometimes in life, we got to walk away. You already know, big bro. And see, this is what so many people gave Dion Flack about from walking away from Jackson State, but they didn't realize the direness of the situation and some of the problems that he was going through at Jackson State with them stealing and mismanaging the funds and, you know, the water situation in Jackson. It, it, just, it was a whole lot going on at that situation where it's just like sometimes you got to move on. 
and people didn't understand that. But you can see it's a trending pattern with these HBCUs that needs to be fixed. I appreciate you didn't, let, you didn't let nobody down, Ed. You didn't let them kids down. You did what you was called to do, and you tried your best. Thank you, big brother. I love you, man. I'm here. I will be on the next flight if you need me. You know that. Now nah, you good. You handle your Thank business. You, you know Thank that. You. I'll give you a call. Please. Hey, you know what God wants from you, man, and be that. Don't let them provoke you, my brother. I, I love, love you, you man. Bro. All right. It's Coach Prime, everybody. And then with some strong words, too, because it, it takes a lot. If you're a person of passion and you, you believe in something and you like Ed is here, it, it, it's a learn. You have to learn how to not be provoked when people try to block your vision or 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 try to purposely deter you from what you're doing. That passion will come out and, and, and they, they, they are allowed to provoke you and get a reaction out of you that they shouldn't get. But. We have to learn how to contain it so that we can continue to vision and get done what we set out to do. And trust your boy, I know it's it's a very hard thing to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because when people try to impede your progress because they own some bull and you know you're trying to do right by folk, it, it, it'll it'll set it'll set you off. You know what I'm saying? And it's very hard to learn how to contain that in order to keep the vision moving forward. But this is what some of Ed had to say as far as his written statement about the whole situation. But then Cumming University has been working with my legal team to craft contract terms with the language and resources we knew were needed to build a successful football program. It's my desire not only to coach football, but to be an agent of change that most people just talk about being. However, after weeks of negotiations, I've been informed that the university won't be ratifying my contract and won't make good on the agreement we had in principle which had provisions and resources best needed to support the student athletes. I was committed to coaching and cultivating a relationship with the university, players, community, and the fans. It's extremely disappointing this won't be happening. Thank you to those who share my vision and believe that greatness can be achieved with the right environment and surroundings. Although we couldn't make things work at BCU, the goal and mission are still the same. We serve to lead, lead to serve. We will continue with our pillars, respect, educate, empower, dream. Our efforts will remain about the kids through our foundation via our health and wellness programs, camps, and fundraising. We won't stop changing lives for the better as we've done for over 20 years. Shout out to NMD Sports uh, for the video clips earlier and then uh, shout out to Matt B. Great because I wasn't about to read that uh, paragraph that he narrated on there. But anyway, man, long story short, I think every going to be all right. If any HBCUs is watching this, pro this whole thing go down, I think they would be very smart to go in and swoop in and get Ed Reed to their program because he is an agent of change. He's, he's, he's showing you he got the passion to want to be there for the kids and to want to elevate your program. Now, it's going to be like pulling teeth because a lot of these things and a lot of these programs have people that have been there like parasites leeching off of the programs, taking money, not putting funds where they're supposed to be, underserving the kids, underserving the community, and it's, it's going to be a hard thing to do to have somebody who ain't used to that culture come in and break all of that up. But if you are one of the people at these universities, which I know there are a lot that wants things to change, that wants things to stop being the same old, same old, then Ed Reed, I think, is a guy that you need to get in your program and and start to try to change it. We need more coaches who want to come to HBCUs to elevate those programs, even if they're using it as a stepping ladder, uh, stepping ladder to get to to bigger uh, Power Five schools or something like that. I know that ain't the what me people what many people want to hear, but I'm just saying you got to start somewhere. And I would I would say that it was it would be likely to start with people that want to come there and create change in your program and start a a, a, a consistent um, legacy like what Dion was trying to do because he brought a superstardom to, to Jackson State that just you just don't get. Now, you're not going to get that with Ed Reed. Ed Reed is not going to be lightning in a bottle like Dion was. I don't think nobody 
can do what Dion does. He just he just another level of type of person that do what he do. You know what I'm saying? He electric, as you can see. But Ed Reed is a is a is a another version, a different version of that that would still be very effective. So I think if y'all smart, you need to go get Ed. You know what I'm saying? And I, I think Ed, don't don't get too down on yourself. I know you may not have uh handled it in the total correct manner, but it needed to be addressed though. Should you have addressed it like you did? Mm, apples and oranges, maybe, 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 maybe not, but it need to be handled though. There's no way a university be having hoarding trash in buildings and this, that, and other that could be of you. Like it's, it's just you know. But hey, this your boy P. Camp. Do you think uh, Reed will get picked up by another HBCU or um, wh which HBCU do you think would fit him? But let me know what you think. Get at your boy.